My name is Johannes Schweifer. I'm CEO and founder of CoreLedger. And CoreLedger is porting the token economy operating system to Internet Computer. The vision of CoreLedger has always been to provide an, a platform for industry adoption. What does industry adoption mean? And what do people need? Well, on the one hand, we know there are token contracts. This is one of the biggest domains for blockchain technology. And um, that's an industry by itself. On the other hand, there's the possibility to do everything yourself. In other words, you can develop smart contracts as you wish. And there's a big void which is growing, which is in between, which is actually a problem for companies which are active in the supply chain domain or logistics or want to notarize things or just create some artifacts, document on blockchain, things that you can sign, etc. proof of origin, proof of authenticity. They have no value in just creating tokens and they also have no value in developing legacy applications. Of course, when we are talking about big corporates, right, they have their developer teams, but most of the, let's say, smaller companies, they don't. And that's exactly which, uh, where our vision comes in, which means what we do is we provide technology for such companies so that they can quickly implement and realize their solution or even try out things without either having to work with something that doesn't write a token for documents or developing everything from scratch themselves. So what we did was actually providing an operating system. You could imagine it like an early version of a DOS right, with, a, with early Windows, where you have everything that you need in order to get started. We can cater for everything which needs documentation, unique artifacts without ownability if necessary, uh, ownership. The second thing is uh, accounting, where you have a unit of account, one, two, three, five, many. Governance, where unbreakable rules come into play. That's already one of the biggest reasons why we adopted internet uh, computer technology. And the fourth is trading when it comes to atomic swaps. That is something you cannot do on any legacy system outside of blockchain. Having a transfer, actually two transfers, both sides, without a counterparty risk. Either both happen or they don't. So these four features actually, they are the main pillars for our operating system. And we have software on top of that that can be used right away. And the vision is, well, reducing costs for development and also reducing costs for maintenance. And that is the incentive for industry players to say, well, let's try it out or let's build a software. When we talk about industry adoption, there is, of course, the question, why internet computer now? And what is exactly the reason why we have chosen it? Well, when I learned about internet computer, I was like, wow. And it's not just the fact that it's kind of a good fit, right? Internet computer and token economy operating system. It's actually the motivation um, why industry players would work with blockchain technology in the first place. As I said before, tokenization is not a big case with most companies. They don't have a benefit there. This is not an industry application as such. Of course, some do tokenize, but they don't need all the infrastructure that comes with it, like DeFi, etc. What counts there is actually scalability, and the internet computer has a hugely uh, big <laughs> scalability here. So that's definitely very advantageous for us. There is no detrimental history in that sense. So most blockchains have a burden of um, hypes and scams and all that. Not with internet computer. When you talk with a company and provide certain options, then they will certainly go for something that has no such burden. Therefore, we needed it. Definitely. The other thing is, of course, cost and price, transaction pricing. So when it comes to cost per transaction, Internet Computer is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, all in all. And this is important. We did a game in the, in the past and running a game on Ethereum mainnet where you cannot win anything. I mean, it's not a game like Crypto Kittens or something. It's definitely not uh, the best application to run on, on Ethereum mainnet. Therefore, Internet Computer is 
would have been <laughs> the best choice for all future games, of course, we are using internet computer. And uh, it's also the credibility. So internet computer doesn't sound like one of those other blockchain infrastructures, which are mostly kind of regarded in a negative light by most um, uh, corporates and also banking industry. So the banking industry would prefer to have something that they can um, use from the perspective of security, data security, protection, cybersecurity, and that's also what um, Dominic Williams is always emphasizing. And that's actually an asset because these are our customers. We want to go to banks, we want to go to big logistics companies and say, look, we are selling you technology. And it's not just our platform, it's also the underlying infrastructure which supports our platform. And that should also be credible. So it's actually the, 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 the combination package of both, not just our software, also the underlying infrastructure. We needed something credible, now we have found it. So we are super happy. When it comes to practical applications, so what have we done already? I can give a good example, actually many. One good example is iVault. iVault created a circular economy application. That's really a good thing because they emphasize that you should rather try to share and rent and not buy things, which makes sense in our, let's say, economy where resources are scarce. They need our API in order to create all those artifacts which people rent out to somebody. So it's not about tokenization, it is about documentation. Then we also created a notarization application. That is an important piece of software actually when it comes to proving that you owned a digital artifact. Think of NDAs. NDAs can be really a problem if you sign it and there is a conventional, what's it called, um, um, that you have to pay uh, a fine if you violate this contract, even without proof, right? You just pay. And if you could easily and quickly prove that you already had that piece of information, a PDF or whatever, before you signed the contract, then everything is fine. So that's a practical example where blockchain technology helps. And this is also a prime example where Teos is used, documentation, timestamping, etc. Another example is microfinance. So Zwick uh, launched the Tuki application in Sri Lanka, like in December last year. So a really great application, it's about microfinance. People can put small savings into fractionalized financial products. And this is about saving, not speculation. So there's a saving goal and it's really nicely programmed also. They use our API, they use the white label products in order to quickly, um, in order, I mean, when they developed it, right, in order to be able to quickly develop uh, the whole thing. Um, other examples, well, there are also some that are, let's say, boring from the perspective of tokenization because there is no tokenization involved, which is about certification, proof of origin. And you can also uh, quickly understand why this makes sense. Because in countries like Germany, production costs are super high. They have a competitive disadvantage against uh, companies in, for example, China, where production costs are low, raw materials are cheap, and if there is breakage, they just throw it away. In Germany, you can't do that. Especially because you have to prove where it's going to, right? So even the, the breakage costs you something when you, get, uh, when you want to dispose it. So the big advantage that German companies and EU companies in general have is quality. But how to prove quality? Quality only has a value when you can really prove it and when it's genuine. Of course, you can create your own certificates, right? But who believes that? So blockchain technology is something that helps a lot by creating certificates, by documenting each individual production step, and then being able to, without any doubt, create certificates that can be accepted on each and every corner of this planet. That might be a boring example, but for us it's actually inspiring because uh, that is where we think industry adoption is heading to, creating these unforgeable artifacts. And of course, in the AI world and so forth, we're also doing things like creating marketplaces for data, etc. This might be more interesting, right? And also is for us. And there are so many new fields where we are going into, but I think that should suffice as examples. Mm -hmm.